There he is. All right, guys. Thank you so much, man. Good, good. How's everything? Everything's good over here. Just a uh, little graduation for my daughter, but that's about it, though. So. Oh, man. So you're busy, huh? I just, you know, we just got done with that. We're good now. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry about that. I didn't know. Uh, you were busy. How's the how's the virus situation, man? How's everything with the coronavirus um, over there? Same as... Well, well, Atlanta is all right, I guess. Um, we're just hanging in there, being safe. Um, you know, it's it's a tough situation right now, but we're just um, trying to be safe and see if we can get through this. Um, yeah. You know, everybody's trying to stay home and do what, you know, hanging out with the family and and just trying to see if we can get over this. Yeah, man, definitely. Uh, were you actually with Atlanta right now? you still working for them? Yeah, I still work for Atlanta. Um, I'm yep. in Atlanta right now. Um, yep. So uh, we have some talks uh, last week uh, going on what what the plans are and stuff like that. But um, we still we still waiting and see what what MLB gonna do. Yeah, everything is on hold. Um, so I'm gonna maybe translate a little bit in Italian during the the live just because we have a bunch of followers from there and some of them are like I oh, don't okay. understand English, so please help me out. But anyway, <laughs> man, uh, I started with this this live uh, a couple of weeks ago just kind of for fun, and now I'm actually enjoying it. Next thing I know, I'm talking to Andrew Jones. So thank you, thank you so much for taking your time. Uh, it's yeah, an no honor, problem, man. It's my pleasure. Yeah, everybody was really happy, and you know, a bunch of questions came from the followers. So I'm gonna try to. I'll make it quick. Um, 17 season in the MLB for you. You have 2,196 games, 434 home run, 1,289 RBI, and then 10 gold gloves, and you were a five-time All-Star. Um, do you consider that as a pretty good career, Andrew? Uh, I enjoy every bit of it. Um, you know, it, it's so tough to to just – get to the major league, um, you know, everything start from the beginning, from the minor league. Um, you know, it, it, you go to minor league and you don't know what can happen. You know, you get injury and then you can have like a thousand guys down there that are trying to do the same thing that you want to do. And I think, um, you know, hard work and, and uh, respect, discipline and, you know, getting the opportunity and take advantage of the opportunity, that's kind of pay off for me, for me to get a chance to make it to the major, major league. Um, but, you know, it, it was just a, 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 a long journey. You know, that's why I was, I wanted to do, that was my dream. And, um, you know, everything came through, but, um, like I say, hard work and, and discipline, um, pay off. Yeah, man, definitely. I'm sure that, you know, that's, that's how everything happened. Uh, you were born in Curaçao. Uh, there's a lot of talent coming out from Curaçao right now. Was it always like that? Even in the eighties and the nineties, I mean, when you were growing up? Um, you know, baseball always been big in, in Curacao. I think going yeah. way back when my dad played and, 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 and when baseball got discovered down in the Caribbean. So, um, you know, I know my dad used to tell me a bunch of stories um, from, um, you know, them playing against in the Pan American games with Cuba, how, how good Cuba was, how, how um, you know, tough the series was against them, to, you know, going against them. So um, baseball been going for a long time and I'm sure – well, back in the day, if we had opportunities to get scouts to go down there and, and, mm -hmm. and look at players, I think we could have more players from Curacao way back before then. But um, okay. since that, um, you know, people start coming around and um, baseball got discovered more in, in, on the island. And, um, you know, they start signing a lot of guys. Um, before me, before Eva made it, um, we um, it was a lot of guys signed by, by the Yankees in um, Baltimore. Um, so, and, you know, like everybody know from Curacao, Hansel Mullins was the first one that made it to the major league with, um, with the New York Yankees in, I think it was in the eighties, uh, not eighties and ninety, I think early nineties. So, um, you know, he kind of opened the door for us, but, um, before that it was maybe by a handful of 10 guys that were signed professional in the minor league from Curacao that just trying to chase their dream and, had the talent to, to, to play the game. So yeah. baseball always been big in on the island. And, um, you know, it was one of the sport that <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the sport that everybody wanted to play. Um, I think it was more like an organized um, off, off school. We never had baseball in school. We only had um, basketball, volleyball, and soccer in school. We only played baseball like in the neighborhood okay. and an organized team. So 
that's how baseball got big on the island. And, you know, since that, you can see now, I mean, um, we got so many now in, 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 in the major league and, you know, going from, you know, Anderson Simmons, uh, Kenley Jansen, Jonathan Scope, um, you know, Jura Profar, um, Didi Gregorius, um, yeah. you name it. I mean, there's so many. Um, uh, Al, uh, uh, Ozzy Albies. Um, so it's a lot of guys coming out there. I think it's the opportunity is getting, you know, they're getting the opportunity to to get the chance to play and um, they're taking advantage of it and showing yeah, their yeah. talent. Definitely, man. And so you started when you were like very young, I'm sure. Oh, uh, baseball been like I said, baseball been there. Yeah, yeah just I've playing, playing the streets. Since I, was, since, I think since I started walking, I, I started playing baseball. So uh, yeah. that's one of those things. Okay, okay. Uh, stiamo parlando velocemente della, di come è nato a Curaçao, un paese dove comunque c'è molto baseball. È cresciuto a giocare da quando era piccolissimo. Um, so when did you start like getting serious? Like you were actually playing in the streets and everything like that. But like when did you start like? having the dream to actually go to the States and at what age? I think, right? I, I think it started around 12, 13, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I started getting mature and I started feeling myself a little bit more. Um, earlier, I just was playing the game and just loved to play the game. Yeah. Um, I still love to play the game, but yeah. I think around that age, you know, 12, 13, I started kind of feel like, uh, I think I want to, I want to do this and, and for, for my career. And, I think, um, you know, scouts are coming around and look at me and, and I start talking that, you know, you have a talent and we can, we can develop it. So, um, you know, that's why the whole signing start coming involved and, and, and trying to be a professional. Yeah, 1993, you actually signed. You were 16 years old. Uh, so yeah. I'm sure it wasn't that hard to leave, uh, to leave Curaçao to go to the States because you, like, you had so much will to, like, go there and perform and everything and show well, what, I, what you were I, capable yeah. of. Well, I think you ask anybody from the island. I mean, everybody wanted to leave the island and go to a big country and and go uh -huh. out there and 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 play something that they love to do and 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 the same time be be a job. So, um, you know, it was it was an easy easy um choice you know choice uh to 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 come, but um you know that's what I wanted to do, and it was a big talk that I had to talk with my dad and my mom and um. You know, and he told me, I say, when you leave the island, there's no way, way back. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, you're going at such a young age and, you know, you basically not finish school and anything. So um, to go there and you just have to put that, you know, put that career in front of you and just go get it. Absolutely, man. Um, so your minor league experience was pretty short. I mean, you, you went to the bigs quick. Like, it was just a matter of three years. Uh, were you just mm -hmm. ahead of everybody, like physically, or like were you mentally like locked in, like that that was your goal and you just went for it, and that's why it took so well, be, so much I, not much time to do it. Uh, no, I'll be honest with you, I joined every every year of it. I think my my mindset was trying to graduate every every level that I play, and um, trying to learn every day when I get on the field and 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 make make myself a better baseball player. So um, I took that as 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 my goal and i think um everything kind of worked out in a way for me early in my career in, in the minor league but i i think i think what what the main thing was the opportunity that they gave me i think yeah. you know we all i think get opportunity in, in in life and um if we take advantage of it i mean we can we can go forward we can go far with it yeah you're a picking italian uh andrew ha firmato 16 anni e a 19 era già in major quindi tre anni e basta nelle mani sono volati ha detto che comunque mentalmente era, era carico, quindi è andato per, per quello che era il suo obiettivo e, e non si è fermato. Um, so, that year you actually became, the, the, the year that you actually went to the Bigs, you became the youngest guy to, youngest player to ever hit a home run in the postseason, post right? Um, mm -hmm. That was, was one of many, because then after that, like we said, uh, you ended up hitting 434, uh, you know, combined with, great defense excellent defense that we all know about was that your like your um your plan at the plate i mean is that what you're trying to do like being a power hitter that could play like good defense obviously uh be honest with you no i mean i, I think through the minor league i developed i developed my um my power through the minor league and i discovered it a little bit um but my main thing that i always do uh took pride of is my defense and since my league i always used used to go out there and take take 
take um, early work on him, go out there and work on, on getting into the ball, go, uh, work on going back on the ball. So, um, you know, learn the hitter, learn the, learn the, the opposing team, and um, that make, make it easier for me for, for my career through, through, the, um, through the major league. Yeah, I was going to ask you how you end up, like, how do you win 10 gold gloves? I guess that, that, that's how, huh? <laughs> I think I, no, I think I was just lucky. I think, um, <laughs> you know, lucky to be in the right, the right place, right time. And then I took advantage of it. Um, like I said, I took a lot of pride in my defense. Um, yeah. You know, every day um, we, we get, what, an hour and a half of practice every day before the game. And, you know, I took 30 minutes on it to, to work on it. So, um You know, that 30 minutes every day pay off. Sì, Andrew ha vinto 10 guanti d'oro e ha detto che comunque era una cosa di cui, aveva, di cui era molto orgoglioso la sua difesa e si allenava tutti i giorni anche prima della partita un'ora e mezza a cercare di leggere le battute e conoscere i battitori. Uh, the Braves had a tremendous squad, uh, you know, that year. And I mean, how did it, how did it feel to be part of that, the, you know, that team, like being so young? Well, um, well, first of all, I was just lucky to be there after after 1995. Um, you know, they won the World Series. Yeah. Um, when I was in the minor league in '96, all I was trying to do is win a championship in 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 um, in A ball, and uh, get a chance to go up to the major league and and play with such a great team and such a great players um, around me, and I learned so much from them and. They made me better, and I, I think I made them better too. At the same, at the same time, so um, you know, it was just one of those things. We all make each other better to make a, a great team. I think we all had a goal every year to go out there and get to the World Series, and you know, we only made it probably uh, two times, you know, in in our career when I was with the Braves. Yeah. But um, you know, we we managed to win division division championship every year for 14 straight 14 straight years. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, how how about like the pitching rotation you had on the mound? I mean, was it like pretty well, much? <laughs> like, not, I know I'm gonna win today again. Well, uh, um, we had you know those those guys were special. I mean, they 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 knew what they wanted to do. They know they went you know they they took their business very serious when they got on the mound. Um, they know what they wanted to do, and. We we know what we want to do. We want to we want to win. And if we have them on the mound, give us a chance to 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 score some runs, and they hold the hold the um, hold the opposing team, uh, we got a chance to win. Um, like I say, you know, we we were lucky to have you know probably three three Hall of Famers, and you know maybe we had four or five in in in, in the starting rotation. So um, it was good and. You know the, the the front office managed to to work out to put a a good team on the, on the field every year for us to 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 win. Um, you know everybody's gonna go back and say, uh, "Well, you guys only won one one World Series." Um, but um, you know we it, it's tough to win a consistent division title yeah. every every year. So um, that's why we are proud of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was watching like some of your videos, some of your like great catches. And most of the times, Glavin was on the mound. Is that, is that true? Like, did he, did he pay a lot of like lot of dinners to you? Because <laughs> no, you made some great catch no with dinner. him on the mound. <laughs> he, he, he never he never paid me no dinner. But um, <laughs> they they Maddox took care of us more than anybody. Maddox used to always invite us out to dinner and stuff like that. But um, you know, I, I know what they wanted to do, and they know what I wanted to do. And I went, you know, we we all went about our business. And um, like I say, they, we all make a. It, each other better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after 12 years, you changed the team. Like, was that was that tough after 12 years? I mean, I'm not mean, sure. You uh, it was very longer. tough. It, it, you know, like I said, you know, you know, the Braves gave me the first chance to, to be a professional. And, um, you know, after a long, after a long year with them, um, it was tough to make a change. But, um, you know, it, it took me a minute to make the adjustment. But after, after one year and in, in injuries, um, You know, I managed to put it behind and, and and continue to make myself, you know, a better player that I couldn't be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so after after that, you went to the Dodgers, White Sox, um, Texas, and the Yankees. I mean, Texas was before the White yeah. Sox. But uh, do you have a favorite one among among these four teams, or was this 
Well, I, I think I think I'm 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 lucky for for being part of all of those all organizations. Yeah. I think um you know they they gave me the opportunity to continue to play something you know to continue to play baseball something that I love and I'm I'm just happy and proud of um and you know appreciate of them giving me the opportunity to go out there and play. Yeah, man. Uh, and is it is it different like different all like a whole different experience playing for the Yankees actually? Uh, it was fun, you know. I, I wish I could have played more, but um, that was not my role. But, um, you know, it was fun playing. It was a great organization, um, first-class organization. Um, it's all about winning, and um, I'm sure every other team that we play with, they're all about winning. But um, they took manners uh, a lot different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, some of the, the followers asked me, uh, what's it like to play with Derek Jeter, A-Rod? And there, there's a bunch of, like, more guys, like Mariano <laughs> Rivera. Like, there's so many in that well, team. I mean, you know, they, they, you, you, you name them, they're all Hall of Fame players. Um, great yeah. great athletes. Um, a bunch of winners there on that team. Um, Derek is one of one of my best friends and um, one of the nicest person you can ever meet and, 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 and talk with. So, um, you know, it was nice to, you know, for so long we play against each other. Um, in in two war series versus each other, and then get a chance to play play on the same team was was very very special. Yeah, man. Uh, I saw some pictures. Pretty cool to see all those players together. It's unbelievable. Um, so once you were done with MLB, you decided to go to Japan. Like, what what made you like take that decision? Um, well, I, I, I felt like uh, I wanted to play a little more. I wanted to play mm -hmm. every day, and uh, I think uh, the team in Japan um, they call me and they say, hey, um, you know. We need power, and um, and we're gonna give you opportunity to play every day. So um, for the last five years before that, I haven't played every day. Uh, I was a part-time player, only play against lefties, and um, and you know whenever somebody need a day off. But um, uh, I felt like I still had um, some something in my tank, and I went out there and um, I went out there and, and and see what I what I can do. And you know I was lucky enough. I went over there. and won the championship my yeah. first year with the uh, Rakuten Anglers, and, um, you know, I learned so much. I mean, uh, I, I always was a big fan of uh, of Japan. Um, I've been to Japan, you know, quite a few times before that uh, for play baseball. So um, I was a big fan of the, the country, and, you know, I, now when I went there and played for two years, I, I appreciated it more. Yeah, man, uh, and then uh, I was lucky to, to meet you there. Uh, your, your guys' coach was an old-school coach. You guys had the Oshino sign. Yeah. Which was very, yeah. very respected by every, everybody. I remember we, we talked about this. Uh, you were saying that the players almost had fear in, like, you know, everything, in fear of the manager. Like, they, they, they were, like, that, that afraid of him, right? Well, well, the, the, the thing is, though, that's, that's the culture of Japan. Yeah. Um, you know, the, 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 the skipper always is the, the sensei, you know. It's, it's the, the person that everybody's re very respectable. But I think when I went there, um, I kind of changed everything a little bit. I mean, everybody yeah. relax, and, you know, I always joke with, with the manager, and a lot of guys don't do that because they have so much respect for the manager. But I, I had respect. It's not that I disrespect him, but I was trying to relax him and, and kind of make the team not be too tense because everybody was just like so tense because if he, if he say something, everybody just put their head down and, and, and walk away and, 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 and trying to put more pressure on himself. So I was trying to relax everybody and enjoy it. I think that's how I play my base, my whole career in baseball. Um, I enjoy every day. I play hard, but I enjoy it and I have fun. And, you know, we just have to go out there, have fun, relax, and good things happen. And we had a great team. Um, you know, like, you know, we had one of the best pitchers in Japan that Japan ever had. Um, that was Tanaka. That I think he went like 30-0 that, that year. Yeah, uh, so, did. Um, yeah. You know, he was unbelievable. So now he's still pitching in the major league and everybody can see what kind of talent he had. Yeah, man, I was uh, I was about to just to talk about uh, Tanaka. I think he went 24-0 and and then he actually uh, continued that in the yeah. playoffs. It was pretty unbelievable. Uh, I saw yeah. some of the games that you guys were down and so somehow like you would just end up winning every time. Um, yeah, I mean, that was the whole year. I think, every, you know, we will go, you will go into the night inning um, losing and won nothing and we end up hit a blooper and a homer and he win the game. So um, it was one of those years that everything was work out perfect for him and, and the whole team. And, you know, we end up winning the whole, whole championship. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I apologize for the Italian speaker. I'm I'm gonna put this on YouTube and probably like put some subtitle. I don't wanna like keep Andrew here too too long. Um we're almost done though. I got some some good All questions right. though coming up. Um good, so good. like once you retired, you you never thought about like becoming a manager, like a coach? Um, not really because you know, I still got a young kid at home and um mm-hmm. I just wanna be around him and and, and kinda help him in 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 his dream that he wanted to chase. So um, I think when when he, he move on and, and hopefully be a professional or whatever he decided to do, I think I will start moving more into that okay. that role. And, and, and But I still work with the Braves and I still go to spring training. I help him, um, you know, all the outfields defensively and, um, you know, give him all the knowledge that I learned, all the knowledge that I know, um, the little tips that I can help them be better and 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 um, you know we'll, we can go from there, and hopefully they can yeah I can help them um, win a championship. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so a bunch of guys asked me uh, who was the we're talking about pitchers now. Uh, who was the best pitcher and blah blah. blah. I'm gonna go top three because you, you've seen so many. So the top top three pitchers that you play with. It's probably top with but... that I play with. Yeah, yeah. In your team, yeah, yeah. You actually were sending my team. To them. Um. The the main one that really had nothing and it was unbelievable <laughs> was Grand Maddox. Yeah. Grand Maddox was like he don't look like a pitcher. He didn't act like a pitcher. <laughs> he had nothing and I, I couldn't understand how he, he was getting out. So um, you know, I think he was one of the special pitchers I had. Um talent wise was like the best talent was John Smoltz. He mm-hmm. had talent. You he he was a great athlete. He could play golf, basketball, volleyball, everything. Whatever it is out there, he can play. Um, but Maddox was the best pitcher I've I seen. You know, besides, you know, I didn't get a chance to play behind Tanaka, but I saw him yeah. a lot. Right. Um, he was up there too. Um, but Maddox, Maddox was the best. Nice. Uh, so now the top three pitchers that you actually had to face. So I guess the, the hardest Ooh. one to hit. <laughs> well, we can go back. Uh, there's a couple in Japan that I I, I, I hated to face. They always <laughs> bring him to get me out. But um, Kevin Brown was my toughest pitcher I ever, I ever faced. Um, he was so – he was a tough pitcher. I mean, mm-hmm. you can name a lot of pitchers that I, I, I face. You know, I lighter, I face him so much. But I don't think it was his tough. It was just me trying to do too much to him, and, and I couldn't – you know, kind of make that adjustment to 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 have a high average. But um, Kevin Brown was one of the best pitchers I ever faced. Okay, and now we're we're going to the position players, like the top three position player that you ever seen, like you ever yeah you ever like share the field with. So either opening or like wow. teammates and stuff. Huh? Wow, I'm sure Derek um, Jeter is probably there. I, I, uh, Jeter is is a complete player, but he's not my top. Okay, he's a great no. player, but he's not yeah. my top player. Okay. Um, I think I I played first. Some uh, you know, Ken Griffey was my idol. He was my mm-hmm. best, you know, my best player that I I ever see, and I always trying to be like him because he was my idol. So I think Ken Griffey was my my number one player um, I ever see play. Okay. Okay. I see. Uh, and then uh, one of our followers was asking you what's the best overall memory of your career, but uh, I don't know if you have one that you can recall right away. Oh, my best best part of my career? I, I think mm-hmm. you just get the opportunity to um, play Major League Baseball. Yeah, I think, just um, the other thing, huh? you know, it's just, it's it's so hard. It's so many, it's so many players um, chasing their dream, um, getting the opportunity and, um never make it so i think i think you know my best memory of 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 you know playing major league baseball is just the opportunity to be a professional baseball player and 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 have a long career i think a lot of people you know want to you know a lot of people make it and don't stay long you know they they play yeah. for 3 years 4 years and 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 gone out of the, out of the game so i think the chance of of being a, a major league baseball player and a chance to play over 10 years. That's, I think that's the best, that's part of, of, of my career. Yeah, man, we're going to uh, like a funny, I guess, uh, mode. Uh, one of the guys was asking, since like in the club, a lot of like funny things happen, I guess. Uh, <laughs> if you have like one of the funniest pranks that you ever like 
scene or like any like, oh, man i don't know it's, it's, it, it, it's so, so many, many. Really, yeah. it's so many i can i can <laughs> pick and choose one of them i mean i think one of them you know that i can remember um we were going on a trip and um Somebody was very afraid. Uh, Eddie Perez was very afraid of uh, ghosts. So um, <laughs> I think Tim Hudson dressed up at the, as the ghost and got, went into his closet. And when he got in his room, he opened the door and he came out. I mean, he was about to die. So I think that was some, <laughs> one of the funniest spring. But we had so many, you know, so many jokes in the club. I'm it's, sure, yeah. it's, it's so many. I can't, I, I can't even put them two together. Uh, um, oh, so, okay. Uh, thanks about that. And last, we're going to wrap it up. Um, so I started this brand. It's called Dominate. I really think mm -hmm. that in order to be successful, you have to be able to dominate your mind, uh, especially mm -hmm. through, you know, through the up and downs uh, that the yeah. career presents you. Um, you know, we all think that maybe like guys like you are a superhero that never had bad times, you know, like, you know, they're just good, we think. But I'm sure it wasn't like that, right? I mean, I'm sure you had some a lot of downs like throughout your career. Well, I I, I think I think um, in everything, I think in life is in life period. You know, it's just up and down. But you learn from those down, and you learn from the up. I think you know, especially in baseball. Baseball is a sport of failure. Um, you you you're gonna fail more than you you you're gonna succeed. So um, you gotta learn how to, how to fail. You need to learn how to 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 know how to control the failure because some people can fail so much and and lose their mind and never n find the 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 up back. So I think you need to learn how to you know the down and understand that and learn from it and and you know when you get up then Just you know what it. to do when you go back yeah. down. So. Um, you know, everybody have the coal and, 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 and the hot. So when you hot, you got to just make sure you, you ride it as long as you can. Because when the coal come down, it's going to be cold. You got to know how to, how, to, how to make that adjustment and how to get out of it. I think, I think this game is a game of failure. But I think the people that know how to make the quicker adjustment is the ones that's going to be, be a superstar or a, a, be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, man, that, that's it. Um, you know, thank you so much uh, for taking uh, your time. Thank you for having me, buddy. I, I sent a lot of messages out. Uh, you're one of those guys that actually got back to me. So I uh, really thank you a lot for that. Uh, no problem, buddy. Uh, wish Good you, wish you the you. best. And thank and you too, man. man. Keep in touch for anything. Um, All thank right, you man. again. Okay. Uh, All right, man. Be safe out there. Yeah, yeah. You same. All right, bye. Bye, bye. Okay, guys, thanks. Didn't want Andrew Jones to be there too long. I didn't want to be there too long. It was a party of his daughter. His daughter actually was having a party, so uh, I tried to make it quick. I tried to make it as fast as possible. Excuse me if I didn't translate it much in Italian. And tomorrow I'll make a video on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to post a video on YouTube tomorrow, and I'm going to put the Ita Italian subtitle. Uh, metterò anche magari i sottotitoli in italiano così chi non è riuscito a seguire potrà, potrà farlo e niente vi ringrazio a tutti per essere stati qua per aver aspettato anche un minimo ritardo thanks you guys thank all you guys for uh, participating sorry that I try to make it quick like I said I didn't want to make him wait uh, his daughter was uh, was having a party or something like that so uh, again thanks guys uh, we're gonna ask Scott Richmond soon uh, I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna start messaging him and see when he's available. Uh, he might be next, and then I have uh, a few other guys lined up. Quindi, molto probabilmente la prossima sarà con Scott Richmond, che ha dato la sua disponibilità. E poi ho altri, un altro paio di ragazzi che, che hanno voglia di, di fare queste dirette, quindi saranno molto probabilmente.